So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics podcast. And I'm pretty fucking pumped to be here again. You know, this is always just, most of the time, it's just a really great feeling to be here, talking a little bit about the stuff you actually like, you're passionate about. And, yeah, no, it's working. Um, yeah, even though, which is, you know, also a great part, it's so beautiful outside and therefore... Sorry for being a little bit, a little bit slimy, um, and therefore I will just hit all those two episodes in a row out here, so that I just you know produce them and make them and upload them right ahead, so that I can actually um, also read again a little bit, which is definitely something that I kind of lack of. You know, I do just always think about reading and think about actually getting a little bit more knowledge through reading because. For me, even though I think just reading alone as a just source of knowledge is just total bullshit. Because you can get the knowledge of, you know, of reading most of the time just in the internet very quickly and way faster than if you just go through a whole book. But actually reading a whole book is definitely another feeling and another different source, another um, kind of different approach to getting the knowledge you are just willing to have. And uh, yeah, and therefore I'm just really into reading. Uh, I have been reading quite a lot in my uh, in my past. I kind of stopped reading and when I just started this whole journey, like in the in the very top that I'm actually now in terms of actually producing so much content that I and you know being so much on these on these platforms and commenting and just engaging with other people and other people's posts, so that I actually can't really uh, read or I do just don't prefer it anymore as much as I as I used to. And yeah, but that's totally fine, you know, unless uh, you're getting all the knowledge and all the things that you want and you're happy with your life, everything is great, I think, you know, I don't give a fuck what you're doing unless um, you're not happy, you know, if you're not happy, I just really wish you that you just find what makes you happy and do this every fucking day long as much as possible, if you can, and I hope if you don't can yet, that you will in the future. But yeah, um, we will go ahead with hashtag girlboss. And this is um, because I did forgot to just uh, yeah name it in the other episode, which episode it was. This is, I think, the third episode, and this will probably be the last episode of this book. Um, unfortunately, I uh, couldn't upload the podcast yesterday. So, um, yeah, there will probably be four episodes of the podcast today, which is also great <laughs> if you look at it like this. But, yeah. So the job world, applying, hiring, and firing. And before I even start, I think firing is the most devastating of these three. I think just firing someone is something that's so, so, so tough, you know, for the one who is actually firing the person, not actually the person who, who is getting fired. But I think the boss is just, you know, who the fuck wants to, to fire to fire people, especially when they are just some kind of good or they just do not fit this certain job and but you are forced to just fire them i think this is just something that nobody likes to do really i think i think no fucking body likes to do it so the first rule of hiring although playing hard to get might playing hard to get might be cute in the dating world but it won't fly with potential employers they don't have time to curd you so you had better romance the hell out of them <laughs> totally like you know if this if really people do this shit then i don't i do know why they just do not get a job if they just really play like you know i'm just pretty good or i just act like i'm good and i just wait that my fucking employer waits to or i wait until my fucking employer knows or just recognizes that i'm a good catch um, yeah, I think this won't go <laughs> that that good or that well, actually. So, I'm a Russo, and I definitely know that I'm pronouncing her name definitely just really wrong. But, uh, yeah, I do care, but I don't care in this context. So, I'm a Russo explains that when you are applying for a job, there is going to be a tough competition out there. The job market is a rough playing field, and you have to impress and stand out if you want the job. The best way to do this is to apply for a job you truly want, one you think you can be passionate about and drive in or thrive in. And Amoruso has one piece of advice if you don't know if you're passionate about the job yet. Fake it till you make it. Um, in general, the whole fake it till you make it piece of shit is such a piece of shit 
you know, I do not understand why still a lot of people do this, you know, why would you do this? Only because then people just might think, okay, you know, this is a rich guy or a rich girl, you know, who gives a fuck about what all the people are saying? And I don't get it, you know, just besides the whole fact, I don't get it why you just want to be just, you know, seen as somebody you aren't, you know, isn't it much better to be seen as who you are, but, you know, in a good way and just, you know, just step your game up so much that actually you do not have to fake it. Wouldn't this be a goal? I don't know, you know, it's it's just really, yeah, I don't understand it. But in this context, I do have to say, um, I do quite have to say, okay, I, I just have to say, okay, you know, it do it does make a little sense for me. In general, I do hate the fake it till you make it shit. But um, it do make some sense in this context, to be honest. But just because just saying, okay, you know, I will do it. I'm passionate about it and whatsoever. Just to see if you're actually passionate about this or not. And then actually just, you know, lose your job again or just, um, you know, go away again. Could, could work, yeah. Um, because I think to, to really understand, you know, what you like and what you're passionate about and what you love, you really have to do a lot of things. And the best way to do a lot of things is just by applying to a lot of jobs. And, you know, if you're just always being like, you know, I don't even know if I like it or not, this is, to, to be really honest, not, not something that's, you know, very fine for or very good for the employer. Because he then thinks like, okay, you know, if he isn't actually passionate about what he will be doing, you know, why should I employ him, you know, and then he will just go away and I do just have to search for another person right ahead, you know, I think this is not something that a lot of people would like to do and a lot of, uh, and especially a lot of employers do not really like to do, so um, I do have to say, which I'm just really <laughs> sad about, to be honest, that this might actually be kind of working or kind of, kind of good, I don't know. Cover letters. Writing a cover letter is a tough gig, but Amaruso points out that it's literally your future boss first impression of you. And that's totally true. So it's the first time they experience who you are and what you can make of the job. A couple of tips from Amaruso on writing your letter are the first one is it shouldn't be about uh, it shouldn't be about you uh, want out of the job. It shouldn't be about what you want out of the job. A good cover letter will express what you will bring to the job and what you will do for your boss to be. And this is actually something that I always see when people apply for an internship, especially, you know, in my class or just in my school, because we all have to do an internship because of the school and because we all just need the practical experience, which is, I think, you know, very, very good. The downside of it is that, you know, the school itself doesn't help us with finding a lot of, uh, finding an, a good internship and therefore we just have to do it on our own and this again has a good side and a bad side. The good side is that you're actually very forced to just give your best to, to really get an internship and, and, you know, only the best writers maybe or the best people will get an internship um, or an internship easily. And, but the downside is, you know, you might work then in a company that you actually do not like. And, um, yeah, this could have been prevented, uh, when people actually know, okay, this is a good, or the school actually knows this is a good company. This is a bad company there. You can learn a lot and there you can't learn a lot. And, um, yeah, they actually could make a whole system out of it, by actually just, you know, being sure that the people or the companies just really get the best students. So the best companies get the best students and so on and so on in terms of their, um, of their skills, not in terms of their fucking marks, um, because this doesn't make any sense. You know, marks uh, only just show how much time you have and does not, doesn't have anything to do also in the practical um, subjects what you actually can do, because a lot of people are just, just don't want to, want to work in a school, but rather work just, you know, in private, you know, in their leisure time for actual clients and make their money. You know, this is also just a thing that are some people in my class do. Um, yeah, so explain why you want, why, explain why, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> so explain why what you have been doing prior to this is going to help you in this new position and explain where you want, to, where you want the new job to take you. Spell check, it's the first impression, so try to impress. Spelling should be simple. 
Yeah, totally. Spelling is definitely something I struggle with. I can't spell for shit. I can't do it. I don't know why. You know, I'm just, you know, a lot of people always said to me, you just have to read and whatsoever. But at the end, I do think I just don't spell in the right way because I do want to be faster and I do want to be just uh, more creative with, with what I'm writing. And, you know, the whole spelling and thinking about spelling might just really, uh, I don't know, just compress or suppress my ability to be creative and being fast, which is, which would, would make sense, but I don't know, you know, this is the, this is the problem that I actually don't know. <laughs> so resumes is actually, at my point of view, something very great, because I think if just your employer just really sees, okay, this person worked at another company and this person just really, you know, did a good job and, you know, the company actually says it as well, then why shouldn't I actually give him a try and just let him work at my company as well? So Amaruz explains that your resume is the one place where you need to actually brag. Explain what you have done in the past and why it was successful. Show your future employees that you can make stuff happen and follow through. Don't be too modest. Um, I think in general with, with the whole being, uh, what is it called actually? With the whole bragging thing, bragging thing, you like it's not like bragging, but I I do kind of feel like okay, just um you do have to really have a feeling for how much you should do it, at my point of view, and this always comes up to whom you're talking to and who you actually are, um but really just bragging so much that you actually are like you know it and it always depends on um what you have done before you know if you have really done a lot of things and if you're really really good at what you're just applying for then it's totally okay, I think, you know, just, just, maybe bragging is just the wrong word, maybe this bothers me, I think this bothers me, yeah, so do not brag, but just tell really honestly what you can and what you can't, and yeah, 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 because I think everybody can do something very, very good, everybody, if it's uh, putting makeup on, if it's doing design, if it's talking, if it's spelling, if it's I don't know, there are such a lot of things on the world and I do just think that every single person is talented in one single way, at least one single way or one single thing. Interviews. So you've got through, actually, I've done a whole video about the best job interviews. I've also named the episode something like this. So please check it out. It was a very great episode and I thought that it, is, uh, that it you know, pretty much gave a lot of value also to me and I think also the, uh, to the audience. So there were a lot of things that I didn't know and I do just, um, I do just uh, read and got a little bit of knowledge about how to have a great interview and how to actually talk to people and how to deal with people. So therefore, I think I can really say that there is something like, you know, value in it. So check it out, search on my channel, like there should be somewhere a search bar or just type it in into this search bar. And if you're on the podcast, I do not know, maybe there's also something, yeah, there should definitely be a search bar somewhere should be <laughs> so uh so you've you've got through to the interview stage this is where it gets scary as amarusa points out no two interviews are ever going to be the same totally and therefore i'm pretty glad that i already had three interviews um which is always great i also had one in english to be honest um which which is also great and i do have to talk in english in a job as well which which is always quite fun for me and i'm do just actually thinking about moving to another country moving in a english speaking space when i'm just older or when i just can move out um because i do think you know this is just the language that i want to talk in and i want to speak i i'm not like i hate german i do just am some sort of proud to be able to just speak two languages in a proper way. So German, to be honest, or German, just, just obviously, but also English, I think in a, you know, quite good way. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I do just really think that, or feel like, okay, English is a language that I would prefer to speak some kind of, maybe I do just like the, the language a little bit more. And I also think that, you know, if I would be living in an English speaking space, then um, the whole speaking here on the channel and here on the podcast episodes would definitely go a little bit smoother, you know, even a little bit. It's quite good now, for now, for the fact that I'm actually just talking a completely, uh, you know, other language the whole day long. I think it's it's just really great. Okay, I, I'm doing quite good, I think. Um, 
So, and it's hard to know exactly what they are looking for. It's a good idea to do, as, to do a little bit of research about the company and the position you're applying for. Try to explain why you are the perfect fit. And this is, I think, one of the most important things that you actually, and even though a lot of people just tell other people, that you actually have to do a little bit of research for the company and or the people you're talking to. I think this is really something important. This could really just, you know, rank you way higher than, you know, your uh, competitors um, why because I do feel like and this is something I know people like to talk about themselves and talk about what they have achieved and if it just can provide a lot of great questions not like very questions like you know how is it doing in your company or some shit like this um, I think you're just really giving you a boost in terms of your ranking um, because as I said people like to talk about themselves and if you just keep a little bit of attention to this fact then you definitely can just see it that most of the time people just like to talk about themselves um, so if you don't get the job it's not necessarily because you didn't interview well or you didn't make a good impression sometimes it means that you simply didn't fit the bill or there was someone else out there who was just that that little bit better amaruso reminds us that you're not necessarily going to get the first job you apply for and that's okay keep going, you're only going to get better at the process. That's totally true. Um, there's also a great book and a great uh, book summary about getting rejected rejected on the Samuel, Samuel Thomas Davis.com website. So everything written together, just type in something like, um, yeah, rejection, book summary, and Samuel Thomas Davis.com. And there you should totally find this book summary. I've also talked about it in the podcast or on the YouTube channel. And it was a great book and it gave a, a lot of great insights about the whole mindset of getting rejected and why getting rejected is actually one of the not bad things. You know, it's actually, again, another way to learn a lot of things. And um, But though... It doesn't have to do with you, you know, this is the fact that, you know, it might be because the other person had a bad day or the other person was just not not doing great or uh, the other person just had a lot of problems in their family right the day before or whatever or they just don't like your product, you know, at least um, or at the end quite it doesn't have anything to do with you, maybe with how they t think about you, you know, this could be true if you're just approaching them in a, in a way they don't like to. Um, but then it's, you know, probably also about how you just, you know, went to them and talked to them. It's then also not about you. So, so yeah, so please check it out. It's actually a great one. I just wanted to say I would probably just link it down in the description, but I always forget this. So I'm not promising it to you. <laughs> I might be doing it. I might not. Um, but yeah, I hope I will. <laughs> to be really honest, I hope I will. But I do just have the feeling that I won't. I'm so sorry. I, I do just have the feeling. Um, yeah, so you got the job. Time to make sure you keep it. So if you think that getting the job was the hard part, you're probably wrong. Now you have to keep the job. And the way to do that is to do more than just your job. And that's totally something that uh, Gary Vee also talked about, which was a little bit another context. It was actually about companies and fundraising and all this stuff. And the actual thing is that company who just raised a lot of money just think like, yeah, we have done it and now everything is good and whatsoever. But the thing is, now it really starts. Now they just have to pro have to just, you know, get up to their promise and actually do what they just, yeah, said they will do. And this is then the fucked up part. This is then the part where a lot of people, I think, I haven't been in the position yet, um, a lot of people think, okay, uh, yeah, every, everything was great and then they actually see, okay, um, they just have to do something and they have to do it in a good way and they have to just, you know, come up to what they have promised and then they are like, okay, uh, not so easy. But yeah, um, so Amaruso explains that although you have a job definition, it doesn't mean that you should, shouldn't ever do anything outside of that specific definition. Everyone at your company should have the same goal to help the company thrive. And you are there to do whatever it takes to make sure that happens. And having the, having the can-do attitude is going to get you further than one who is not willing to get their hands dirty. Totally, because 
what fucking employer wouldn't like just an employee who is really thriving for the fucking company, who is really like, I will work so hard for the company to succeed as if it was actually his own company. You know, this is, I think this is actually the really dream employee of every employer. Boundaries are there for a reason. Your boss is not your friend. And if you're the boss, your employees aren't your friends. I don't know. You know, it always comes up to, you know, what employee it is and, you know, what position they are in. If it's really like your personal, I don't know, manager, then probably having a little bit of better just, uh, yeah, relationship with this certain person might be a good idea. You know, not saying like you should be the best friends or whatsoever, but I think just, you know, just being good with each other and just, you know, being some kind of a friend is um, totally great for the whole atmosphere that a company could have. Like, you know, the inner, uh, the, the inside of a company, you know. And I do think uh, this is also something that I've quite read a lot of is that most often just the inside of the company is just the same as the outside of the company. And therefore having a company that's working pretty fine and everybody is just friendly to each other or actually everybody is a friend of each other might just or will probably just be seen on the outside of the company as well so so yeah i don't know you know maybe you know i'm definitely the wrong person to think about this because i am not in a company i do not have a company i do have quite nothing but my my business my business and yeah so <laughs> i should probably just you know talk to another person about this Firing. Being a boss is difficult and the hardest thing you're ever going to do is fire someone. Amoruso has a few tips for facing this difficult task. Don't explain that you are finding this hard to the person you are firing. It's much harder for them. Try not to over explain. Avoid apologizing. Don't make it too personal. Make it a quick experience. And there is no point drawing, uh, drawing out the pain for either of you. Before you begin, put yourself in your employee's position, consider their feelings and take that into account. Yeah, um, makes sense. And I do also think like, okay, if you're, if you're able, if you really have the ability to just give this certain person another job at another company if you want to, you know, and if this you know, person is really good at something, I think you should totally do this, you know. Um, why not, you know? Why would you just fuck with this certain person why would you just kind of dismiss giving them another job or opportunity maybe even just a job opportunity that might just fit them way better than you know in your company you know this could actually be true you know your company might not fit this person and you know the other way around or vice versa you know this is just something that's this totally true and if you have the opportunity and if you're just a really uh, a business owner please do me the favor and just give this person another opportunity and another firm if your just best friend or if just someone you know has a firm that this person could apply to you know this I, this just really would make their day and really would, would make their their life i think but yeah so if you're the one being fired it can be a much needed wake up call a push in the right direction or an escape route or it can just explain, suck. But no matter what, they, what the d details of the situation are, how much you learn from it is entirely up to you. Learn from your mistakes. Totally. Maybe this just company wasn't a fit for you. You know, it could definitely be the case. You know, why not? Why not? Business. Is this... No, this... It's fine. I will go through it. It's always great to just see and I'm, I'm always quite a little stressed that I won't just finish the episode, uh, you know, in a good manner or just, you know, I do not want to make such a lot of episodes about one single book. Um, the good thing about it is that I actually just made the decision that I'm going to go th through two books at the same time, which is at my point of view just very great because um, I'm actually providing myself a little bit of a change every single day and I'm also providing my audience and I put the people who are just listening or watching me a little bit of um, yeah just different things every single day um, especially during the week where uh, there's actually uh, yeah only one episode a day that people actually kind of can just mix it up a little bit and kind of um, yeah are able to just watch what they want and uh, yeah I'm not being forced to just never watch any episode of my stuff or listen to any episode of my stuff 
for uh, a few days because I'm talking about an episode they are talking about a book they actually don't like. So business. Starting a business also takes a lot of personal sacrifices. If you start a business, expect that you're probably going to be broke for a long time. If you're not broke, consider yourself broke. <laughs> and uh, the thing that I can say is that it has a lot of sacrifices, personal sacrifices. And this is definitely what I've just seen with uh, the thing that I'm doing right now. I definitely sacrifice a lot of time with the people that I actually like the people that I actually love, also just my girlfriend, I do just have less time for her, which is um, often something that's that's not that good, to be honest. You know, often, uh, yeah, she isn't happy with the whole situation and I'm not myself, but um, I think this is something you do just have to try, first of all. And if it's not working out, you just have to adapt to it. You just have to make compromises when you really just want both things. You know, I think this is always the same thing. Um that you just have to just manage your time in a certain way that everything is just possible that you want, you know. If you don't want it, just, you know, work as hard as you can and fuck about everything else. But I do think this is also something that's not that, you know, not that good in the long run, you know. Just having nobody then after you've just really just, yeah, uh, kind of build up your business and whatsoever. I think, uh, yeah, having some social interactions, um, is important. So Amoruso explains that there are two different breeds of entrepreneurs. The ones who are who are well educated and make the decision to start their own business and the ones who don't see any cho- any other choice. Amoruso explains that a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into a business plan and they may spend a long time waiting to finish it or waiting for some validation to their ideas. And sometimes they will never come or you'll never feel like you're finished. Amaruza explains that just getting started is the best way forward. A business plan is just a guide. It's not the law. And if you're a real entrepreneur, you'll be able to adjust and amend things as you go. Don't get caught up in the little details. Amaruza appreciates just how risky starting your own business can be. And when there is money involved, whether it be your own tied up in in overheads or your investors waiting for the return, the risk and stress can be immense. Totally. Starting a business also takes a lot of personal sacrifices. If you start a business, expect that you're probably going to be... Okay. So if you're not broke, consider yourself broke. Dream big, all you want. And that's what this entire book is all about. But know that the first step toward those dreams is probably going to be a small one. And that's totally true. You know, everybody starts in a small way. You know, Apple just really started in a fucking garage. And now they are... uh, billion dollar no a million dollar company there were a billion dollar company once (laughs) Um, but at the moment i think they aren't um but yeah so everybody starts small and i do really believe in the fact that the best way to start a business is actually starting it and not making a plan about starting it because because this is just what i always do i always just start what i what i want to do you know if it's taking cold showers, if it's just building myself social media pages, if it's trying out advertising, if it's whatsoever, I always just try it out in a, you know, at least, first of all, in a very small just space, in a, you know, very small uh, proportion to the really big end goal, and then I just stack up and or adjust and, you know, whatsoever, but, but yeah, but yeah, you know, this is, I think, a very great way to go. Uh, what are the chances? Uh, in her final chapter, Amarusa poses the question, what are the chances? The question nearly all new businesses will ask themselves and what are the chances of success? In the US alone, over half a million new businesses launch each month and Amarusa explains that within the first two years, 80% will not make it. So yeah, the chances aren't great. But no matter how you look at it, if you, if you don't try, you'll never know. Maybe you are in a 20% totally and um, it is also something that a lot of people I think just do they think like you know I will never do it I will never be able to do it and whatsoever so they just think negatively about what they actually want to do and at the end they are just not able to do because they didn't start to you know then at the end it's not about they weren't good enough or the business and or product wasn't good or they had the wrong target audience or 
the target audience actually didn't like the product or whatsoever. It just, you know, really started or ended with the start with just not actually starting it, which is, you know, the way you shouldn't go. Um, I do just think that you shouldn't start with, you know, all your money put into this one thing and whatsoever because... Yeah, even though it can be a good thing, just burning all the boats and all the bridges behind yourself and just only being able to go forward is also something that I see that a lot of people just, yeah, that a lot of people just made it through this technique or through this uh, strategy, which is, um, at my point of view, also the thing with all the poor people. And this is just an explanation explanation for me that, or for why a lot of poor people just made it for, or made it to such a, you know, greatness and got so successful that they didn't have any other chance they couldn't do something else than just working 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 and they just had then the mentality and also the perspective the perspective of being like okay i know what it is like when i'm just really fucking poor when i have nothing when everything is shit and also just the mentality of okay i will just work no matter what you know i just need the money whatever i just have to do for the money i will do it you know I'm not saying you should just do everything, but but you know what I mean. Uh, regardless of what your dreams are, if you listen, if you listen only to those around you, the chances of your dreams coming true are very small. But here is the real shit: you can't have it all, and nothing comes easy. You will make sacrifices and compromises, uh, get let down and let other people down, fail and start over. But difficult means. But difficult doesn't mean impossible, and you can't control. And you can't control, and what you can control is how hard you try, and if or when to pick it in. Totally, you can always just do it. You know, you can always just. Uh, what do what do I want to say? <laughs> you can always try harder and harder and harder until you, hopefully, not break, but until you just know. Okay you know what, this is actually something that won't work out for me and I maybe just do have to do something else. Totally. Then we will go ahead with the action steps. A really useful tip from Amaruza was to understand your finances. Check out my blog post on how I made my personal finances using Pocketsmith. Actually making a little bit of advertising for them. Yep, check out, I'm totally, or I'm currently, not totally, currently on the paulminers.com website. So, um, yeah, if you want to check out hashtag girlboss as well and want to go through the summary on your own, uh, check the website out. I might link it in the description what actually I wanted to do all the fucking time because I, uh, yeah, I thought like, you know, it would totally just give a little bit more value to you because you can actually go through it more easily and you do not have to search for it and you know whatsoever download the complete book on amazon also a great step and take a look at your cv uh, is it up to date give it a look over and at any uh, achievements totally and also if you are just in the graphic design space and whatsoever always and i'm just really sorry for saying this always just you know put a portfolio to it just add a portfolio a lot of people just send things over with no portfolio only saying what they are able to we are all visual people and especially in the design space and if it's graphic design if it's fashion design if it's whatsoever please use a fucking portfolio please please do this and last but not least practice the power of visualization visualize what you want and you'll be one step closer to achieving your goal totally Doing this is just very something uh, yeah, impressive also if you think about it in the following way that your mind can't actually decide whether it's a thought or whether it's reality. Um, this is facts, I think. I do just have to look it up once again to actually be sure that this is something scientific. But as I know, it is actually something scientific. So um, yeah, therefore, uh, this is just it. Yeah. You know, you, it doesn't matter if you're thinking it or it's actually the reality, your brain thinks it is. Therefore, just thinking about being healthy, thinking about being rich, thinking about whatsoever, just lets your mind think or just believe uh, that it is actually that thing in reality, which is totally something that's impressive, I think. Now we come to the conclusion and the key takeaways. Being a hashtag girl boss means being in charge of your own life, making things happen, not letting things happen to you. 
the jobs you the jobs you while you're in high school high school or chalet or college may seem shitty but they are helping you in the long run when you land that dream job you'll be grateful for the hard yards you put in totally uh, if you don't feel like uh, you fit it you fit in at school don't worry it's not for everyone it doesn't mean you won't be successful that's something that's very important i i do i think i do just have to make a post about this because it's so important for me uh if you don't feel like uh no i read that some rules need to be followed such as paying bills but rules that society expects you to follow are sometimes there to be broken stretch the boundaries It's important to find a work-life balance that works for you. Uh, you also really need to learn about uh, about and understand your own finances. Now where the money comes from and where it goes out. Work with what you have got. It's okay to be an introvert. Introverts make good leaders too. And the job market can be difficult. Ensure your cover letter and the CV are up to scratch and practice your interviewing skills. Uh, then the further readings. Uh, the guidelines book well, let's start with this one this is actually the book of the author of this article which is a book about uh yeah i think it's actually 40 even though he says there 33 is actually i think about 43 um best self-help books combined into one with 80 pages and 150 minutes of uh, audio if you buy the whole thing i think you just pay 30 dollars um and all the books if you just Uh, uh, would buy it, you know, kind of every single book, you would pay around $300. Then The Lean Startup, uh, which is also a book I think I have not been talking about, but I don't know, this is the problem. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and You Are a Badass, and You Are a Badass at Making Money. And I think I will... Will I? Yeah, I will read through it. So if you enjoy this book, then check out Chen Sincero's first book, You Are a Badass, for an enjoyable insight into how, the, how to empower yourself. Banish yourself, banish your self-doubt and live your best life. Also by Sincero is You Are a Badass at Making Money. Sincero will help you stop letting your doubts, fear and excuses get in the way you show you, show you, you, show you how you too can be as wealthy as you want to be. Another enjoyable book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson, an interesting read that will empower you and give you a new lease on life. The Lean Startup by Eric Rice is a great read for budding, budding entrepreneurs wanting to get ahead, start on their own business. The Lean Startup defines a scientific method, methodology for running startups and launching new products This new approach has been adopted around the world within startups and established organizations. Regardless of your role or company size, this is a must-read for entrepreneurs, marketers, developers, and business leaders. And then the guidelines book that I actually talked about before. Yeah, um, this is it with the episode. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it was energetic enough <laughs> because I actually fucking pumped. You know, at first I was more pumped than, you know, um, you know to the end of the episode, but... Uh, but yeah, I hope you understood everything. I'm a little bit, not ill, but I'm just a little bit slimy everywhere. So I do hope I'm not sounding like, you know, uh, like shit. And you do just understand everything that I'm saying. And yeah, uh, with that being said, please, 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 please watch your legacy. And um, that you're actually giving back something to the people. If it's in your progress, if it's, um, you know, in general, give something back to the people. They need it, you just have to because what you give is what you get in your life. The best thing or the best one is love. If you give a lot of love, the, probab the probabilities of you getting love is actually, I think, higher than if you're not giving any love to anybody. But yeah, uh, I still wish you the best wealth, health, happiness and success. And I see you in the next episode from today, which I'm actually, I think, going to record actually afterwards, right ahead. Maybe. But I think so, yeah. So I see you. <laughs>